But with the emergence of the uh, Asian economic powers, including uh, China and India, and their increasing energy demands, what goals would you like to see such nations set in this regard? I would imagine, of course, the heaven on earth. And to achieve this, it would be best for these energy spending countries to develop in a wise and sustainable way. They all know that already. The question is to put it into practice, the knowledge that we have already accumulated. They should set goals to use sustainable energy and minimize their greenhouse gas emissions in their industries because every effort is worth the benefit to their citizens' health, environment, and even the economy. This is the true meaning of prosperity. Unfortunately, as countries develop, their demand for meat also increases as they can more easily afford it. However, this is extremely counterproductive because demand for meat pushes up energy demands enormously while worsening global warming, raising animals is responsible for 80% of all greenhouse gas emissions from the agriculture sector. Here are three reasons why these developing countries should also set no meat and instead propagate vegan lifestyle as their number one goal. First is to save energy for better purposes. Meat production is energy intensive and grossly energy inefficient. To produce one kilogram of beef consumes 169 megajoules of energy or enough energy to drive an average European car for 250 kilometers. Hmm? One six ounce beef steak costs 16 times, 16 times as much fossil fuel energy as one vegan meal containing three kinds of vegetables and rice. The UN IPCC's chair, Dr. Rajendra Prachori, further points out that meat requires constant refrigerated transportation and storage, the growing and transportation of the animal's food, a lot of packaging, a lot of cooking at high temperatures for long periods, and the whole lot of animal waste products that also need to be processed and disposed of. Meat production is so costly and inefficient, so unsustainable, that it is bad business to produce meat. Second, besides energy precious land, food and water resources already scarce in these very countries are also wasted or degraded to unacceptable degrees. To produce one kilogram of beef requires seven kilogram of grain for feed instead of direct human consumption while yielding less than one-third the amount of protein. The poor are bound to suffer from hunger. And overall, increased meat consumption has always been correlated with germs in chronic diseases such as cancer, heart disease, and diabetes, whereas before that, these ills were virtually unknown. Well, finally, one reason why developing countries should say no to meat production and consumption is that by turning to the plant-based diet, they will gain invisible benefits as well. In India and China, it is already taught in their traditions, in the law of ahimsa, meaning non-violence, and the law of karma, which says, as you sow, so shall you reap, meaning by turning to the virtuous, compassionate diet of a vegan alone, they would generate such a positive, constructive energy. This new loving power could even stop the effects of climate change in their vulnerable lands and open up people's innovative thoughts to solve all manner of economical, social, and technological problems. And every country 
whether developed or developing, will flourish in ways beyond our imagination. I promise it is true. <laughs>